Hello, Central New York. I'm Storm Team Meteorologist John DePasquale. Going to talk about uh, some snowmakers here over the next few minutes. First and foremost, let's focus on the January 2019 clipper that came in from Alberta. This particular system didn't produce a lot of snow for us last late January. A quick three inches of snow from the clipper as it progressed off to the east. It wasn't stalling out. Uh, it didn't intensify really a lot as it moved through either. So that kept our snowfall amounts down to about three inches in Syracuse and throughout most of central New York. Now in the wake of this clipper, it did turn very cold for us all. Temperatures got down close to 10 for highs by the end of January, and we saw some localized significant lake snow east of Lake Ontario with a cold west wind. But again, most of us didn't see a lot of snow from that clipper. On the other hand, we had a storm prior to that clipper move through central New York, and this is the biggest snowmaker we had all last winter across central New York, at least widespread snowmaker. We saw the storm coming out of the Mississippi River Valley and then transferred its energy from the Ohio River Valley to the coast as we went into the Saturday night Sunday time frame. This is again January 19th and 20th, which was a weekend storm. Uh, and then in the wake of it, we saw some limited lake effect. And of course, it was cold as well and brisk. Uh, with this storm, we had 14 inches of snow in Syracuse and in general over a foot of snow fell for most areas of central New York with this particular nor'easter. And there was some icing as well caked in there. So that made for some tough times getting around that weekend. But thankfully, it was a weekend storm. So you may be wondering why the storms transfer the energy across the Appalachians to the coast. Well, mountains, it's hard for the storms to get through, first of all. But then once they do transfer their energy to the coast and these storms then really take off and explode, why is that? The Gulf Stream, that's right, is a stream of water, unusually warm water, right near or just off the eastern seaboard. And when you get cold there, meeting the relatively warm air over or near the Gulf Stream, that can cause the areas of low pressure just rapidly intensify and turn into winter's hurricane and really pound the east and northeast with heavy snow, rain, wind and ice, and also some coastal flooding. OK, so a classic example of this was the blizzard of 93, the superstorm. That's right. It originated in the Gulf of Mexico. And then as it intensified rapidly moving into the southeast, up the eastern seaboard through southeastern New York, lower Hudson River Valley into western New England, this storm really packed the punch. Historically low pressure was just was found with this area of low pressure. Uh, it produced thunder snow for several hours in central New York. It produced a foot of snow across parts of the deep south and actually killed over 300 people. This storm was responsible for over 300 people's deaths. A very, very intense historic storm. We had winds sustained 25 to 35 miles per hour with higher gusts in central New York. Snowfall rates at the height of the storm, six inches per hour with again, thunder and lightning on Saturday evening. This was a weekend storm and it was a quick hitter. 24 to 30 hours basically is when most of the snow fell. And with those gusty winds, we had snow drifts eight to 10 feet and it made it basically impossible to get around central New York during the storm unless you had a snowmobile. I mean, just an unbelievable storm this was. And then we had some limited lake effect in the wake of that blizzard of 93. And I got to say, uh, in my lifetime, I've never seen a storm like this. And uh, we'll see. Maybe we'll get another one like it at some point in the future. But uh, this was, again, a very memorable storm.